Hello everybody, welcome to Zania's World. I'm backing up another video and we're about to get into it. Like, comment, subscribe, do it everyone. I'm just happy that you're here. The reason why I am making my intro right now is because <laughs> I woke up with food poisoning from the food I ate in this video, but that's not the point. Let's get right into it, bye. <laughs> looking sexy not right now um welcome to the video i probably already said that in the beginning why i'm making this video but i'm taking myself on a self date today where i'm gonna take myself out but then i also have to prepare i have to look pretty so the first things i'm gonna do is i'm going to put on a wig i'm gonna do my makeup i'm gonna do my nails i'm gonna paint my feet i'm gonna do a full um nine yards and the reason why i'm doing this is because i'm going to a Nicki minaj roman's revenge 10 year like anniversary and they're just gonna be playing like a whole bunch of Nicki music and i just want to go shake my ass so with that being said come watch me i'm gonna apply my wig and then i'll be back <laughs> So this is the vibe. I feel like I have to do this. I put the ponytail in a clip and I clipped it back. And then I put some lashes on. Are we feeling it? So obviously this video is bougie on a budget because obviously, I keep saying obviously, I'm so sorry. I bought this wig off of Amazon. It was had to be like around 50 or 40, 20 dollars. It's not that like, it wasn't that much. I'll probably put it linked down below borrowed these lashes from my little sister i got these off of sheen my rings but i've been had these rings and i'm not gonna go to the nail shop so i got me some these first off i seen a tiktok a couple weeks ago where the girl was like like don't go get your nails done don't go overdo it like you could literally just go buy a set and you will look banging so i decided to get some classy classy nails you know I, for, I didn't know that it was extra long because I was trying to get out that bitch because for some reason my fuck ass job because I work at Walmart um you would think that okay customers okay you don't gotta you don't gotta attend to a customer I'm an employee I'm an employee I'm a motherfucking employee these motherfuckers took they didn't even come they didn't come to unlock the thing so now I'm over here looking like I'm fucking stealing because I'm popping them bitches off. That's why it's all ripped right here. Like I'm popping, I'm popping them bitches off. I'm like, I'm not about to wait for you motherfuckers to come and open the chest for me. Hell no. So then um, another topic I want to talk on <laughs> while I'm trying to put on these nails is the Will Smith shit. First off, let me, let me put this down real quick because I got some shit to talk. Okay. Gotta match up my nails, see which one fits. Okay, I got some shit to talk. First off, black women are not protected, period. And a lot of people don't like to say it because they're like, all women, no, no, shut up. I'm talking about black women right now. Because yes, in a way, all women are oppressed in some way, but black women sometimes have it worse. Hello. Black women sometimes just have it worse. Why the fuck would she come in and then lock the door? And when I was watching the Will Smith video, I kind of was like, why did Will Smith slap the shit out of Chris Rock? Like, we're all very much fucking confused because why would this grown ass man get up out of his seat and do all of that? But then if you think about it, then it came out, okay, well, he made just made a joke about G.I. Joe. And then it was, dang, I feel bad for him because like, somebody really like why did he put why did he put his hands on her and then you could see a whole bunch of videos of um jada pickett smith saying that she doesn't she has alopecia and obviously right now a big problem in the healthcare system is that black women are not taken seriously for their pain for their suffering we go to the doctors and we're more likely to die in childbirth because people don't believe that we are in the pain that we are saying that we're in they think we are being dramatic so when he made that joke about the hair i just started thinking like 
I started thinking and I was seeing TikToks and I was like, damn, this is why he slapped the shit out of them. Black women are not taken serious when it comes to our pain. We're not allowed to cry. We're not allowed to be vulnerable. We are supposed to be some strong people. And usually it's like fair game when a white person talks about us because white people, bitch, I'm going off if a white person talks about us. But when it's another black man, another black man think of that talking about a black woman that's when it starts to get a little bit crowded like that's when the opinion starts to get a little bit crowded because black men simply do not protect black women okay and you could debate me on that i could even i could show you millions and millions of reasons on why black men do not protect black women but then it's like two black men we are these strong women. We're supposed to take anything. They laugh at us on internet, call us fat, call us stupid, say we're gonna get diabetes, that we're disgusting, we're single mothers. And then when we start going rah, 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 it's like, why are you doing that? You're such an angry black woman. But in reality, no matter how many videos you put out of Jada saying, oh, I love my hair. I don't care if nobody loves my hair that does not make it okay for other people to make comments on it. Even if they were at an academy, you know what I mean? Like, even if I was at an academy, like, bitch, fuck y'all. Like, yes, Will Smith, if I had a, a husband, okay, I ain't got no husband right now. But if I had a husband and my man didn't like, beat him up or say something to him, <laughs> I am going to kick you out. But yeah. Jada has alopecia. Don't talk about black women's hair. We hold a lot of our beauty in our hair and in our bodies, you know? And we are allowed to be mad at those kind of jokes. Even if we say, well, I love my big lips. Doesn't mean you could be like, oh, well, you're fat ass lips. Like, no, that's not okay. On top of that, I don't think that Will Smith should have um, slapped him in front of people. I feel like as a black person, it's kind of just um, reinforcing the idea that we are ghetto, okay? And I know people are gonna be like, well, don't say that, you just saying that because it's white man. That's exactly why I'm saying it. That's exactly why I'm saying it. You know what I mean? Because there's, there's times to protest, but there's times to protest behind closed doors. And now, the re now that Will Smith slapped him in front of all of these people, it is now not a black problem. It's a world issue. Because when Will Smith got up and slapped Chris, Chris Rock, that's when we crossed the line of, black on black this is a black conversation you're not invited to it but since it was on national television white people will smith shouldn't have done that i guess alec baldwin and a whole bunch of people were talking about it but then they're the ones and then it came out that they were slapping the fuck out of paparazzis beating up pedestrian like nobody is higher up right because for me like how i was raised is that hold on let me put on this now is that no not how I was raised well how I think is that just like the baby here we go that's another topic that I want to talk about queer black people can talk on the baby the baby situation because it is a black experience the black experience is different from the white experience the white experience is always going to be different from the black experience the Hispanic experience all of those experiences so when the baby went on stage and was like HIV this HIV that that's now stepping into a black conversation because black men are hereditary sometimes um how do I say it sometimes homophobic because of slavery just like this people say um why why do black people say come home when the street lights come on right it's because when the street lights would come on, like I think back in the day, I maybe be telling this wrong, when the street lights would come on back in the day, like we weren't able to be outside after dark because we would be killed. So now it's a generational 
generational thing where ah, i'm over here like losing my track because i'm trying to speak facts right now where it's a generational thing now where when we were slaves we were raped black men were raped black women were raped we were raped and the men were demascul demasculated right i think that's the word demasculated so gay is her homophobia is kind of hereditary because of what we went through so sometimes the reason why things become black black um conversations is because of the black experience okay black people need to check other black people and we can't do that if we got fucking dua lipa saying fuck him do this i'm not saying like she's wrong for doing that i'm saying we can't do that and white people and these other people are trying to be like you're a bad person because now it's not because he's a bad person for doing that it's because he's a bad person and now you're going to be anti-black okay so like i was trying to say was that when will smith went on that stage to slap chris smith it's a black code that's how we grew up you talk shit you get smacked you say something nobody's ahead of a slap in the face nobody is ahead of an ass whooping okay okay <laughs> i'm over here talking too long but i'm gonna put my nails on and then i probably have to go clean up my room i'm gonna go find my outfits and then i will be back and showing you guys like what i'm doing my makeup dancing who cares but okay let's get into it i'm not at the concert yet i have to take a little detour to meet somebody all right guys but come with me i'm gonna take you right over so here to where you got me fucked up come on over i look so sexy I look so fucking sexy. What the fuck? Why the fuck do I stress so much? I'm in love. 
so even though things did not go directed the reason why you did not see me on a solo date at Nicki Minaj's concert was because if you did not see I think it would probably be the last clip the clip of when I was in Carl's Jr. killed my whole fucking mood where um ah I guess I want to talk about it <laughs> don't make me talk about it don't make me talk about it actually I'm going to um just I feel like there's good things come some it's not even good actually let's go on another little rant I don't want to make this video too long because I also feel like I have to throw up because the, the Korean food was good okay don't get me wrong it's just that okay how do I say this <laughs> without sounding bad that was a korean food that <laughs> it was too good but it was too expensive and you know when places get expensive they start to get very iffy right because it's like it's not even good so we ate that seafood salad i kind of feel like a little bit throwing up kind of ish so i'm gonna try to make this short so um i feel like good things are supposed to come to an end again the whole month of march i was going through this thing again you know i was talking to another boy <laughs> it went bad again but then um just in that situation my therapist made me realize yesterday because no today because today's friday today that the reason why i am the way i am and why i, like, I react the way i react is because that's how I react when I face uh, certain situations, okay? When I face certain situations, I'm the type of person who isolates myself and it's like, I am not deserving of this earth and I should just leave. And that's the whole point. Like that was the whole point of like my first two therapists. It was kind of like the reason why I was going to them is because they wanted to help me with my self-isolation and all of that kind of stuff where I just think that I'm not deserving of certain things and all that kind of stuff besides the point so when I went there I just felt like for me something that I'm trying to learn and overcome is when the ending is at right because I talked about my healing journey I talked about what I went through I talked about everything and I, I just been learning so much about myself and life and love and all of that kind of stuff. So when I was sitting in that Carl's Jr., it was kind of like I knew that I should end this with this man. And I knew that if he didn't end it, then I will keep on allowing this. Because for me, something that I'm trying to learning, learn, unlearn is that I have to let go okay and i will not let go of somebody i will keep on trying and trying and trying and trying no matter what because i've always been the kind of person since i've been a kid where i just don't just give up on people i don't give up on people i let people change i give them chance after chance after chance and then boom um they have to leave me because i can't leave them and that's something that i really have to work on but then back to what i was saying my therapist told me like how i react with self-isolation and it's because that's how i react to gaslighting and abuse right i don't want to just keep on calling everything abuse because that's when people start looking at back at stuff and say oh well everybody abuses you you're never in the wrong everybody does this and this but there was definitely a lot of big red flags of gaslighting that my therapist made me realize in this situation with this guy where I love communication, okay? Communication is something that's really big to me, especially since I'm such an understanding, forgiving person. I would just want for somebody who says that they like me, they wanna be with me, they love me, to communicate with me. And for some reason in this situation, it was like 
every time he would leave me on delivered for eight, 10 hours, or he would not make me feel like he wasn't putting in effort or one minute he would like me and one minute it was like, you're doing too much. I don't want to get close to you. Like you're trying to make me be your boyfriend. One minute it was me being like, hey, I'm going to have to take a couple steps back because I want, I don't want to just meet up at your office and do this, this, and this. So then, but then it was like everything that, like everything was switched on me. It was like I was being yelled at by him telling me that I'm just like doing too much. Like I asked for too much. Like, like you, you like, what do you want me to do? Like you do this, this, and this. Like, it's like, it was like everything was turned on me. There was no accountability there was no kind of communication. It was kind of like, I like you, but then you're going to have to prove to me why I should be with you kind of liking. And then when you, when I'm not going to prove to you that you should be with me, you're going to have to prove to me that I should be with you kind of stuff happening. And then when I would be like, put my boundaries up, all of a sudden I was a horrible person. I was getting gaslit by him. I was being told that I'm doing too much. I need to calm down. I'm trying to make him be my boyfriend. But in reality, I was just saying the simple hey I don't like that you left me on delivered for eight ten hours when you literally asked me you know where you sit there and you asked me like you asked me on a date and you left me on eight delivered on eight ten hours on top of that when I got out of that Carl's Jr he like when we were having the conversation and he was like, you're just such a sweet person. I really do like you. I enjoy your company, but I I like feel like we need to be friends until we figure out what we want, want to do. Like I would rather just be your friend until we figure it out. And to when he said that, that's it hit me off guard because it was like, I've been trying to leave you. I've been trying to get away from you. And then that's when we were into Carl's Jr. And that's when I was going to have the conversation of me being like, hey, I don't like that you can't communicate. I really want to take a step back. I, I would rather be friends. But then he beat me to the punch. And I was like, damn. I was like, damn. Like, I know. I know. Like, I didn't do nothing wrong. Right? So then we had that conversation. And then he was. He tells me in the midst of the conversation that it just turned him off, like everything that happened. And then I asked him, I was like, what turned you off? You know, and he said the complaining and the long paragraphs. And that's what turned me off of him. And that's what made me want to self-isolate myself. And that's what made me want to just disappear and crawl into my own crab shell because I'm a cancer. Because being told after going through all of these abusive situations and finally dating by a man who you thought was interested in you, that you were complaining, you're complaining. And those long paragraphs, that those long paragraphs were not just me complaining. It was me asking for a simple boundary of respect. And he didn't respect me enough to communicate with me. He didn't respect me enough to do certain things. So when he did that, I just really like, damn, like, am I really a horrible person? Because I asked a 27 year old man to communicate with me, to not leave me on red, to have basic skills. And then that made me realize you're just not equipped enough emotionally. You're not emotionally intelligent. You're very avoidant. You're avoiding communication and closeness and you lack all of that. Where you think you're going to be my friend because that puts you in the safe zone. But then also gives you the pleasure of still being in my essence. So then when I left the Carl's Jr. I was like I don't want to go out bad because I looked at him and I was like you disgust me because like how can you say that I was complaining when I asked you for respect so then I called him and I was like hey actually like I'm not gonna block you we could still we could be friends and then after I got off the phone I texted him and I was like I know you go through a lot of mental stuff so I'm always here for you but I don't want to be your friend nor do I want to be close to you until we figure out if we do want to talk again. And 
that left me to like want to isolate myself and start gaslighting my own self because that's what I do. I would sit in bed all day and just cry and just feel like so untouched. Like what is wrong with me? I'm the problem. I have to be the problem. He's not the problem. He's not the problem because he's yelling at me and he's telling me that I'm trying to make him be my boyfriend because I asked this nigga not to leave me on scene for hours. <laughs> And then I just came home and cried. And I was like, I'm not going to do nothing. And then I called my friend. And I was talking to her. I was telling her about what happened. And she invited me out. And that's how we ended up at Korean Barbecue. And I had a really nice, joyful night. And I'm going to end off the night at that joyful point. Because I'm not going to allow somebody who just entered my life three weeks ago to ruin my peace and my happiness that I cultivated for myself. I'm not doing it. I can't do it again. I'm not being friends with no grown ass man. I'm not doing it. <laughs> but with that being said, I, I, I'm thankful for you guys watching the video. Like, comment, subscribe, do whatever you want. And I will see you guys later.